Hello and welcome to OH3 SPN Finland. Now it's been a while since I've recorded a video. There's a couple of reasons for this, but the, the main reason is I've upgraded my PC. I've changed everything, changed hardware, changed software. It's taken me a, a little bit of time to get everything back up, built, and in a state where I can be productive. So this video is not about amateur radio, but it is about electronics, and some of this will apply to radio as well when you're fault finding. Now the motivation behind this video is that I just could not find a video that covered this online, which in this day and age is, is just surprising really. I recently bought uh, a VCR, video cassette recorder, for those that are not as old as I am. <laughs> I'll keep the story short, but I, I wanted a hi-fi stereo VHS recorder. I have a, a lot of old VHS tapes, and I just wanted to relive the experience in all its horrible analogue glory. So I picked up a Sony VCR, which has taken a, a bit of work. It was in dire need of a good clean. Uh, the amount of dust and everything internally, uh, everything was, was filthy. Uh, so I cleaned that up, and it's working very well, apart from the fact the remote doesn't work, or it works intermittently. The symptoms are, I can hit a button on the remote and it will likely respond. I can then hit further buttons and it probably won't respond and the more I hit the less likely it is to respond. If I leave it alone for maybe 30 seconds or so and hit another button it works. So in my case it's not the the buttons themselves, it's not the battery, it's not the infrared LED. All of this seems to be working. So having fixed remotes a number of times in the past, I, I discovered that there were no good tutorials on, on YouTube, so here we are. Now I won't do the very basics, of course. You can check whether the IR LED is illuminating using most cameras on your mobile phone. You can check your batteries. You can check obvious things like that. If the LED isn't illuminating, then it's pretty good indicator that you either have bad batteries, dry joints somewhere on the board where these things are, are dropped regularly, or the contacts on the back of the buttons are dirty or, or need replacing. First thing we do is we disassemble the remote. Now one of the videos I saw online said it's impossible to do this without destroying the plastic. You just need a suitable tool. Now this remote you have to use a screwdriver to, to start the, the process of opening the case. But then once the, the bottom is released, you, you can use a tool or a credit card to go around the edge and unclip the remaining sections. Once this is done, there's no screws. You just take the board out. The keypad comes out and you can see if there's any dirt or grease on the PCB contacts or on the, the back of the keypad. Now, one thing that does happen regularly is these keypads, the rubber tends to emit some sort of silicon oil which gets in the way. Uh, so if this is the case, or even if it's not the case and you just want to give the contacts a good clean, uh, a little drop of isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud just gently uh, clean the PCB and the carbon pads on the, the back of the keypad. So that's that. Now, if you have a remote which is intermittent, but the LED is illuminating, then the best thing you can do is get a oscilloscope and connect it to the IR LED. Now, I don't currently have a scope. I do have one on order, but I don't have one now, and I wanted to try and fix this without waiting a month for, for the delivery. But if you do have a scope, attach it to the LED output, and you want to see nice, clean waveforms. And one thing in particular, in addition to any noise on the edges of the square waves, is you want to check that the peak output is consistent. If it drops, which I suspected was happening here, uh, it could be an indication that the capacitor, which most remotes have, is failing or has failed. In fact, in some remotes, it's quite obvious because these electrolytic capacitors leak and can destroy the circuit board if, if not treated. So on this remote, I just did a quick test in circuit with a, a cheap Chinese component tester. Now these are not particularly accurate, there's a lot of issues with them, especially on low value components, uh, but it's just an indicator. And here, it checks out okay, it's, it's within spec. I think it's a 10 microfarad capacitor, it's reading high, which is unusual. 
uh, but the ESR is indicating okay and there's very little loss across it. But I don't have complete confidence in this and for the cost of a capacitor I thought I would change it anyway. So these circuit boards can be quite delicate and a lot of the components can be very closely spaced. So I'd advise using a quality iron and ideally just a bit of flux just to make removal easier. So here I use a solder sucker to remove most of the solder on these pins. I then use some desoldering braid just to clean up any remainder. Once the component is out, I fit the replacement, which in this case is actually a little bit smaller as technology progresses. I bend the component down on the board in the same position as the previous component. I bend the legs out just to keep it in position. I lean the board on something to support it to keep the component flat on the board. I re-solder it. And with some wire cutters, I carefully cut the legs off being careful not to hit any nearby components. I then reassemble the board and test. Now in a lot of cases, this will solve the problem. And of course, if you've got an oscilloscope, you can confirm this. Now in my case, it's not solved the problem, which will probably lead to uh, part two of this video sometime in the future. But let's just consider the other options. If, if the remote itself is working without issue, then the problem is likely on the receive side. And the receive side on most equipment is really quite straightforward. If we look at the schematic here, we can see that the IR detector has very little in terms of extra components around it. However, we do see one electrolytic capacitor again, which is right across the supply, VCC and ground. One of the common failure modes of electrolytic capacitors is a low resistance or almost a short. If that's the case here, it will be dragging VCC towards ground. Maybe once the component is active, this effect increases, stopping it from receiving any further signals. This, this would correlate with what we're seeing. But just to be sure, let's check where this signal, the output of this device goes. We need to look at another sheet following the, the output here, which I've highlighted in green. Now on this sheet, we see this connection coming in, joining some sort of bus and being fed directly to the main control IC. So again, there's very little circuitry in the way of this. Now everything else on this recorder is working, so I don't foresee a problem with the actual controller. We, we would see other issues. So this all points at that one capacitor, which probably is in a horrible to get to location and requires disassembly of the whole front panel of the VCR. So this may turn into a part two video, but mostly I hope this just provides a reasonable how-to on fixing common problems with remote controls. There's so many videos where the cases are destroyed, the PCBs are melted with what looks like soldering irons that have come straight off a gas-powered stove something that you may use in the, I don't know, 1920s to weld pipes together. Really, they're delicate. With a little bit of care, you can do a good job, and most of these can be repaired without any problem. It's really, really rare for the IC inside, proprietary, non-replaceable IC, to go faulty. Normally, it is dry joints. The infrared LED itself can fail. Uh, reservoir capacitor commonly fails. But all of these things are easily replaceable. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention earlier is if you don't have a camera that can show the infrared LED flashing, you can always temporarily hold a traditional LED across the pins on the IR LED and you should also see that flashing, albeit maybe not too brightly. Um, but you'll see that the, the pulses are, are being sent, or at least making it to the LED. Uh, the LEDs are easy to replace if you do, just it's the same process as replacing the capacitor if you think the LED has failed. The, these are quite often um, driven quite hard, so they, they can fail just due to the, the abuse that they're put through in, in these remotes. And if you think about the life of a typical remote that's dropped down the side of the sofa and sat on for the length of a movie with the, the LED constantly illuminated, 
it's not surprising maybe in some cases that these do fail. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope this has been useful. I will get back to some radio related content at some point in the near future, but probably the next video will be disassembling a VCR and doing some further fault finding. Maybe at this point I'll have received my new oscilloscope. But I hope that's interesting. Thank you and see you next time.